Good, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the 2021 State of the City Virtual Address. Like many Southern California cities, Laverne's found roots are in orange groves. On May 25th, 1887, businessman I.W. Lord bought a large tract of land had it subdivided and modestly named it Lordsburg. Mr. Lordsburg persuaded the Santa Fe Railroad to extend its route through Lordsburg. Marketing gimmicks and cheap rail fares brought an avalanche of people to California from the East to the Midwest. Businesses began to pop up to serve them. In 1889, a member of the German Baptist Brethren community bought the unfinished Lordsburg Hotel and turned it into a college. Flocks of brethren and their families followed. Lordsburg joined with the nearby settlement of Laverne and in 1906, they were incorporated together as a single town. Festivities featured a symbolic wedding of Miss Lordsburg to Mr. Laverne. After World War II, citrus groves began to give way to housing for returning GIs and their new families. The little town prospered with employers such as Laverne College, later University of Laverne, Brackett Field, and hundreds of small businesses. The legendary Route 66 runs through Laverne where it's known as Foothill Boulevard. Foothill is one of two vital business corridors in the city and has adapted through the years to meet the needs of the community. It's presently home to innovative retail and housing development, entertainment, dining, shopping, and personal and professional services. In 2017, we welcomed Pomona Valley Health Center to Foothill Boulevard, providing Laverne with urgent care, family physicians, and specialties such as physical therapy and imaging. The heart of our community is Old Town, home to many boutiques, dining establishments, and gathering spots, and the University of Laverne. The school offers four colleges, arts and sciences, business and public management, the College of Law, and the Lafetra College of Education. The university's founders wouldn't recognize the sophisticated city within a city, which now has more than 7,000 traditional age and adult learners. Our regional airport, Brackett Field, covers over 276 acres, has two runways, and is home to nearly 500 base aircrafts with 400 rental hangars. The adjacent property houses many aviation-related businesses. Gilead Sciences became a major employer in Laverne in 2017 when it opened its 23-acre campus on Wheeler Avenue. At full capacity, it will employ 500 people. As our employment and education base grows, so do our housing needs. Providing opportunities for students, young families, legacy families, and seniors to call home is a critical element to keep our community thriving. Laverne Crossings will provide a walkable, public transportation oriented, mixed use community centered around the Foothill Gold Line. This pioneering development will create a vibrant, livable and sustainable community. Laverne is on track for a bright future as one of the Gold Line stops. This station promises to bring ever more visitors to, sit to our city and boost our local economy. The Laverne Chamber of Commerce is proud to present the 2021 State of the City Address with the generous support of our title sponsor, Foothill Gold Line. And now I'd like to introduce our 2021 Board Chair, 
Michael Mergel. Hello and good morning. Can everyone hear me? Okay, uh, my name is Michael Mergel. I am the chef and owner of Modern Mayhem Suites and the chairman of the board of directors for the Chamber, Laverne Chamber of Commerce. Since 1909, the Laverne Chamber of Commerce has been committed to strengthening our community by supporting our local businesses. With the challenges of the past year, our mission has never been more critical. The immediate outpouring of support for all local business was truly heartwarming. And it, is this in the, and it is in this community spirit that will lead us through to a brighter days ahead. But even as we get out of the house, our businesses are not out of the woods yet. And we encourage you to continue to support and shop Laverne, support family, friends, neighbors, and this amazing, amazing community that we call home. If you have any questions, concerns, please wait until the end of this broadcast um, for the Q&A, and we ask that you submit all questions via the chat form. Um, at this time, we'd like to acknowledge our dignitaries that have joined us today. First from Los Angeles County Supervisor, Catherine Barger, representing Congresswoman Grace Napoliano, Bob Pence, representing Senator Anthony Porrentino, Marco Lundgren, representing Assemblymember Chris Holden, Matthew Lyons, Bonita Unified School District Board of Education, Greg Pilato, Council Member Robin Carter, and Mayor Pro Temp Muir Davis. It is my pleasure at this time to introduce Yesenia Arias, Community Relations Manager, and our presenting sponsor from the Foothill Gold Line. Hello. Thank you. I'm gonna um, put up my presentation. Um, did I lose you? Okay. Okay, I'm sorry. Okay, can you hear me? You can see my slide? Yes. Okay, good. Okay, well, thank you, Leah, for um, allowing us to give a quick update of the Foothill Gold Line. As you went into gallery, I'm feeling like I've already seen a lot of these faces in different meetings that I've been to, so this is great. I feel like I'm starting to get to know the community another level deep, so this is good for me. Um, today, I'm gonna quickly go over the Foothill Gold Line, um, the project from Glendora to Montclair, and then we'll get into the Laverne specifics within the construction and then some of the community outreach um, activities that we do. Okay, so as Leah was talking about how population, how we need to prepare for population growth and employment growth, um, LA County's population is expected to grow to 11.5 million by 2040. And at the same time, the San Gabriel Valley is expected to grow to 2 million. And the Foothill Gold Line cities will take on the majority of the San Gabriel Valley's expected growth. For example, if we're expecting um, along the corridor that 41% uh, along the corridor, the population growth is expected to grow at 41%. And um, the job growth is expected to grow at 54%. So we need to provide more transportation choices to have a sustainable community within the San Gabriel Valley. And you all remember this picture pre-COVID that was us on the freeways. And I think we're slowly starting to get there again. But um, of the 2.8 million trips uh, taking place each day within and around the Foothill Gold Line corridor, nearly all are by car. Um, we, we estimate that only 3% are by transit. So transportation choices are essential. The construction authority um, is a separate authority from Metro. It's not the same as Metro or Metrolink. We were created by state legislation in 1998 to plan and design the Foothill Gold Line from Union Station east all the way out to Montclair. Um, our construction authority is overseen by a board of directors 
and the Board of Directors receive feedback from all of the corridor cities through a Joint Powers Authority and a Technical Advisory Committee. We also work very closely with LA Metro in the design of the project, um, the planning of it, and um, also when it comes to the education as well. This is our current Board of Directors. As you see, our Vice Chair is Robin Carter. So the City of Laverne is very well represented. And we have a grassroots approach when it comes to the planning, the design, and the construction of the project. Um, like I mentioned before, the governance structure includes an elected officials group, which we call the Joint Powers Authority, and that is chaired by Ms. Robin Carter. And then um, city staff makes up the Technical Advisory Committee, um, and Mr. Bob Ressi is part of that committee. The gold line from Union Station has been built in three phases. The first phase was LA to Pasadena, which was completed in 2003. And then the Pasadena to Azusa, which was completed in 2015. Both of those projects were completed on time and under budget. And now we're working on the Glendora to Montclair, which broke ground in 2017. The full project is 12.3 miles, has six uh, stations and six cities. Um, we may need to build this phase in, or this segment in two phases. Um, I'll tell you a little more about that in a second. This line connects to the entire LA County's growing rail network. Um, so you'll see that um, it connects here at Union Station. And you can also connect to East LA, Long Beach, Santa Monica, or the San Fernando Valley. Our agency and what we're focusing on is building light rail, which is very different than Metrolink. Um, Metro, uh, Metro for the most part, um, they have they have the red line, which is heavy rail as well, but um, our system is uh, light rail and it will be eventually called the L line. I think Metro is changing most of their the nomenclature for all of their lines. So that's why you see uh, Metro Gold Line and L line in parentheses, but um, these trains operate at top speeds of 55 miles an hour. Um, there could be three car trains that hold up to 200 passengers. They're electrically powered, so they don't um, uh, make the same noise as a commuter or a heavy rail train. And they operate 20 to 22 hours a day. Uh, peak time is every eight minutes and off peak time is every 16 minutes. The Glendora to Montclair project, that's the 12 miles that we'd like to build. Um, the alternatives has, has five major phases. The first phase was the alternatives analysis, which was completed in 2003. And then the environmental uh, document, which selected the locally preferred alternative com was completed in 2013. And then the engineering was done in 2016. And now we're in the final design um, and construction, which started in 2017. and if we're building all the way up to Montclair, it should be finished by 2028. Um, the last um, segment here is transit service, and that is when Metro is open for service. We've already completed two contracts. The first contract was with WA RASIC Construction. They did a dozen of utility relocations and protections. And then in 2019, Mass Electric uh, completed the pole elimination project, which made room for light rail system by moving all of the uh, communication system for the freight lines underground. And then we hired uh, Kiewit Parsons in 2019 and major construction for the Glendora to Pomona segment, not out to Montclair yet, um, started in July of 2020. So far, um, we've done a good dent on the design. It is now 80% complete. The freight track relocation is 18% complete. And I'm sure you've seen some of our um, grade crossing closures and work along the corridor that is at 22% complete. Overall, the project is at 25% completion. This slide is, um, I like it because it shows exactly um, the two segments that I'm talking to you, which um, are the one segment that may need to be built in two phases. So the first part is the Glendora to Pomona. This right here is fully funded. So these stations are fully funded, Pomona, Laverne, San Dimas, and Glendora. Clen Claremont and Montclair is the area where we're still looking for funding. And um, 
the, the base contract with KPJV allows us to um, have that contract option so that they can build the entire project if we find the funding by October of this year. So when we just talk about the area that is fully funded, it's 9.1 miles long. Um, the track is generally within the owned right of way that we have. Um, it's powered by overhead electric wires. Um, the rail corridor is shared with BNSF, but we have to have separate tracks because they're two different systems. BNSF is powered by diesel and we're powered by uh, electricity. It has four stations, which is Glendora, San Dimas, Laverne, and Pomona. The Pomona station will provide pedestrian access to and from the uh, Metrolink station there as well. We have 21 street level crossings, 19 bridges, and nine traction power supply substations. Uh, pedestrian access is from both sides of the platform for each station. And we have four uh, parking facilities with bike parking, electric vehicle spaces, drop off and shuttle bus zones as well. So just to get into the Laverne specifics, um, again, it's light rail track, freight track will be relocated to the northern side. So right now along the entire corridor, you see the freight track in the center we will be uh, relocating that track to the northern side so we can make room for the light rail tracks on the south side of the corridor. There is no uh, renovated or bridges that will be going over major streets in Laverne. Um, railroad crossings, however, we do have the Wheeler Avenue crossing, which was complete um, in early February, but um, our construction crews are actually uh, relocating a water pipe at the moment, and I think um, the street is down to one lane in each direction, um, but that that should be done in about a week. Um, Fulton Road Crossing, uh, that is underway and it should be completed by the end of this month. San Dimas Canyon Railroad hasn't started, railroad, sorry, San Dimas Canyon Road. Um, A Street, D Street, and then E Street should start on April 12th, and then White Avenue. The ones that I didn't say dates for, um, they're not coming within the next few weeks. We still have a little bit of time with those. Um, you'll see that there is new right turn lanes on Arrow Highway at the street crossings when you turn right or north into um, the neighborhood streets or at the railroad crossing. White Avenue, we will be adding some restriping from the railroad corridor to 6th Street. Um, we will not be widening that street. And then um, permanent uh, turn restrictions will be placed on the Metrolink parking lot in Pomona when you're coming out of Fulton Road. They will only be able to turn right or turn right out or turn right in. Um, this is because there's a median in the center of the road that helps with safety. This is a Laverne Station plan. Um, some things to point out here, the blue is the station parking, which will have 299 spaces. Um, we have uh, pedestrian and bike access from White Avenue all the way into the station here. You can also enter the station from E Street. Yeah. So the freight track is going to be on the north side of the corridor, and then the light rail track is on the south side of the This is a station rendering that Leo was sharing at the beginning of our um, meeting. So here we are. This is Wheeler Avenue crossing. <clears throat> Remember I was mentioning that we do have, um, we're relocating the freight track to the north side of the station, or north side of the street, I'm sorry. So this will be ultimately the freight track this right here is a temporary freight track. Until this is completely built throughout the entire corridor, BNSF will be using this to conduct their business. But once this completely is done, then we will switch service over to here. And then we will make this the second light rail track. Fulton Road is under construction, like I mentioned too. The, this shows um, the crews relocating water and sewer lines across the um, crossing. 
Uh, SoCal Edison is also working on the parking lot. So you've seen, if you've passed by there, you've seen some work there as well. Um, this work should be done by the end of this month. Then E Street Crossing is coming on April 12th. That's next week. Um, this is the map that we placed on the notice. And every notice that you see where we have closures, you'll see um, something similar to this. It has the full closure shown with an, a red um, X, and then it has the red dashed line, which means it's a soft closure. It's, it, a soft closure means that it's not open to everyone, but it keeps the access for anybody that's local, whether it's a business or resident, they can enter the area to get into their homes or their business. The green lines are the detours. And then on this particular map, we also showed how D Street is fully closed between 3rd Street and Bonita for outdoor dining. Just so that if people think that they can take other areas or other streets that don't want to use the suggested detour, they also are aware of other things that are happening in the city. When it comes to community outreach, um, we try to do things better than everybody else. We try to do more. Uh, so we do have the construction notice, kind of like this one here, and it has the map that I just showed you. We send that out through e-news e e alerts, um, community walks. I'm actually gonna go out uh, to do a walk today. Our city website, City of Laverne has this widget and they share the information. Our website at the authority, Twitter, Facebook, blogs, um, and then we, we recently uh, created an online interactive construction map where you can just go and I'll show you in a minute. We have a hotline where you can call anytime if you have a question about what is that noise or why is someone blocking my driveway, whatever it may be. Uh, Kelsey DiPaola answers this line. And then if you don't want to call or text, you can also just send in your questions or concerns by email. This is the online interactive construction map that I was telling you about. So you'll see the red X's, those are the full closures that we have. And then any of the, this means there's construction activity, the purple means it's a bridge. To the left of the screen, you'll be able to click and see the notice and anything else that's related to that particular um, activity. It's accessible by your phone, or you can also find it at the City of Laverne's website. For business support, um, we, we try to do as much as we can. Uh, anytime we're going to close a grade crossing, we make sure that talk to the businesses around the area, the homes around the area. For businesses, we provide business open flags here to call attention to the area. And then we also work with the cities to put street banners that say all businesses are open during construction. And then we do sponsored advertisements through money mailer, bell pack, and um, coupon book. Uh, we go to the businesses and ask if they're interested in placing an ad in these books so that um, their regular customers continue to visit. We're planning to hold a virtual community meeting on May 19th, so if you can make a note. Again, information will be sent out through all of the different channels that I spoke about a little earlier. Uh, but if you sign up uh, for to receive project updates, you'll get them directly. Just really quick, a six month look ahead. So project design continues, grade crossing improvements continue, uh, Fulton Road, Euclid and San Dimas started on March 9th, that should be done. We have until August, but crews are saying that they're gonna finish that earlier. Elwood has been closed since March 9th. Uh, Vermont will be closed in Glendora starting April 9th. East Street, like I said, will close April 12th. And then Lorraine and Pasadena and Glendora should be closing sometime in May. Um, you're gonna start, continue to see work, what we call mid-block, which is areas in between two railroad crossings. There's grading, drainage, utilities. There's so many things happening right now. Um, we will begin to relocate freight bridge structures along the corridor. We'll start on the light rail bridge at Route 66 soon. And then again, we'll have our virtual community meeting on May 19th. And then this is the, um, the, the, our website, foothillgoldline.org. This is where you can go and sign up to receive updates. Um, if you would like to receive updates and put your email on the chat, then I can just pick it up from there and um, put it into our database, but just put a note for Goldline so that I know that that's exactly why you're putting it on there. 
And with that, I'm done. Thanks, Mia. Session. Can you hear me? Okay. Thank you, Senia. That was very insightful. We're looking forward to the completion of the Gold Line Station in Laverne and all the benefits it will bring to our community. Um, thank you all for joining us today once again. It's great seeing our residents, businesses, leaders, and education leaders, community leaders all here together. Um, I know we can't meet in person, but this is pretty awesome. I would like to thank Mayor Tim Hepburn for being our guest speaker today and presenting the 2021 State of the City Address. Now, Mayor Tim Hepburn. I think I'm unmuted. Can you guys hear me? I think you can all hear me. Okay. Hey, thank you, everybody. I appreciate it. Thank you to the Chamber and uh, Leah. Thank you for what you guys do, what the Chamber does. Thank you to Michael and also incoming uh, board chair, uh, Morgan Sternquist and all the board members. I wanna thank our elected officials. I wanna thank uh, um, Bob Pence, also Marco Lundgren, Matt Lyons, and also uh, Supervisor Barger uh, for being a part of this. And also uh, Mr. Coles, uh, Carl Coles from the Benin Unified and all other dignitaries. Also, I wanna thank my uh, Council Member Davis and Council Member Carter for joining and our city manager, Bob Russi. Um, and uh, we'll give you a little update on what's going on with our city, but without the chamber and without all that's going on, we're surviving. It's been a tough, tough, tough year. I'd be lying if I, I said it was different, but uh, we're coming through the, the colors now. It looks like we're in, uh, we're in the orange, looks like yellow's coming soon. And it looks like the governor's saying that June 15th is gonna be our opening, which is fantastic. So. We'll keep close, but uh, again, vaccinate, vaccinate, vaccinate. For those who want it, those who want to get it, please sign up and uh, let's get that going. So, uh, Leah, when you're ready, I'm ready. This uh, fiscal year 2019 and 2020, um, budget experience a 3% drop revenue because of the widespread impacts of COVID-19 had on the local economy. Because of this required use of $237,000 of reserves to balance the budget. The city also was very conservative when adopted this, this year's budget and which was reflected in operational budget cuts across all department as well as hiring freezes. Fortunately, sales tax revenues are far greater than what was projected, which has allowed the city to revise its projected sales tax revenue for uh, fiscal 2021 to 4.5 million. Based on this favorable news, staff is expecting to come back with specific recommendations to increase appropriations. The areas brought forward may include public safety cameras, software, street sidewalk, repaving projects, traffic signal and lighting maintenance work, and tree and park maintenance. Uh, possible positions include an assistant planner and community development department. While the economic outlook is currently favorable, the city also recognizes there may be some lagged effects on the economy that could affect uh, the future and, and uh, the revenue growth. We're still expecting to use uh, 1.1 million to meet all operational needs. The city general fund reserve is still projected to be at the 10 million over 30% of our budget, which is great. Um, also related to finances, the city recently completed an annual audit by independent auditing firm financial overview. Based on the outcome of the CAFR, the city is expected to submit a government finance uh, officers association of the United States and Canada certificate of achievement of excellence in financial reporting, which the city was awarded in the previous year. Congratulations. Can you do the next slide, please? Much of last year centered around the city's response to the COVID-19 pandemic. Facilities had to be rearranged. New safety protocols for residents and employees had to be implemented. And some services had to be rethought to be delivered. Our employees are to be commended considering their bravery and adaptability during this past year. They've been amazing. It's been an incredible, like I said, it's been a tough year, but it's been incredible. They've done an outstanding job. Communication of closures and reopenings, economic development and COVID-19, like in every city that affects the COVID-19 on local business have been tremendous. The city has tried to assist in businesses and in many ways over the last year. Refunded 2020 downtown improvement district special assessment. We provided 43 business assistant grants to Laverne businesses for a total of $162,000.
and that's ongoing still. We expanded outdoor operations, closure of D Street, expanded promotions and outreach in conjunction with the Chamber of Commerce, modifications to City Hall. If you guys have been in there, plastic, plastic coverings and covers for people to be protected, staying involved virtually uh, engaged opportunities, neighborhood watch, neighborhood workshops, council meetings. We've had some drive-through special events too, Halloween and Winter Wonderland, created free COVID-19 friendly drive-through events for residents to experience yummy treats, crafts, and enjoy the decorative atmosphere. Both events were a huge success and sold out in a number of days. Residents served over the two events was 280 at Halloween and 785 at Winter Wonderland. Congratulations to Yvonne Duran, Bill Gary, who has now retired, but all the staff and community services department, they did an outstanding job. Also the fire department and also the police department. It was a great time. Drive-In and Movie at Fairplex hosted this city's first drive-in movie at Fairplex featuring Disney's Coco. This event was sponsored by the Laverne Police Officers Association with over 80 cars in attendance. Senior curbside lunch, we converted our uh, congregate senior meal site to a drive-through experience. Since the beginning of COVID-19, the city has provided a variety of frozen meals, boxed lunches, fruits, bread, and milk at the Laverne Community Center every Thursday from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. Overall, with an average of 130 meals a week, and during the months of May 2020 through September, a total of 14,617 meals were provided. We appreciate all the work of the County Supervisor Barger and her staff in helping to open the city quickly and safely as possible. We consistently work with them. Sandra Marvilla, uh, with, which is uh, uh, Supervisor Barger's uh, lieutenant, uh, on all the openings that happen and to get us to a point where the information is flowing to our residents, to our businesses, to get us back open as quickly as possible as we go through the different tiers of uh, COVID-19 reopening. Um, let's see, we're on slide five. There we go, thank you. Um, 2020 municipal elections with the March 3, 2020 election, Laverne voters elected a new mayor, myself, as well as two new council members, uh, uh, Wendy Lau and Rick Crosby. Uh, voters also supported Measure LB, authorizing the city to levy an additional sales tax of 0.75% to fund general services and allowing the city to attract and retrain critical personnel that provided essential services to the community. New taxes projected to generate $3.5 million per year as part of the tax and five member oversight committee was put in place to ensure the funds are being spent and, and, and the voter as the voters intended them and also to keep everybody uh, in tune of how we're using our finances. Slide six, six, please. Police Chief Designee. Initially coming to Laverne as the city's first female police captain, Colleen Flores was named as the Chief Designee this past August, being in line to also become the first female chief in the city's history upon Chief Paz's retirement. <coughs> Excuse me. While the city council fully supports Chief Paz and there isn't a timetable for his retirement, Identifying Colleen as the next chief of police now secures her superior skill set and provides for smart succession planning as well as a clear direction for the department. Next slide, please. Communication consultant uh, for social media. In August 2020, the city engaged communication firm to expand community outreach and engagement. This was made much more important due to the ever changing impacts of the COVID 19 pandemic which increased the need for timely, efficient, and clear communication with residents. After a competitive bidding process, the City Council later decided to extend for Pepe Smith's services to the city, which include communications planning, social media uh, management, content creation, website, article and news release development, metrics and analytics reporting, as well as crisis communication support as needed, and graphic design and video work. We have increased social media communications has helped ensure residents are kept informed about city initiatives, community events, and urgent updates since engaging with Pepe Smith, the city has seen a nearly 12% increase in Facebook followers, a 2,775% increase in Twitter followers, 114% increase in Instagram followers, and a 6.4% increase in next door residents. The city's news releases and articles have been viewed on the city's website an average of 1,393 times per article. 
Valuable city news releases have also been picked up by the local media outlets, such as the story about the appointment of the city's first female police chief, which was covered on Fox 11, the Inland Valley Daily Bulletin, and Newsbreak. Other news releases have also been covered by LA Daily News, NBC, Los Angeles, and Patch. Next slide, please. Projects completed. Fruit medians, installation of medians from 820 feet north of Foothill Boulevard to Baseline Road. The medians provide a clean and calming look to Fruit Street. 90% of this project was funded by Highway Safety Improvement Grant with the 10% local match. The final cost for construction was $580,000. The D Street sidewalk, the new 12,500 square feet of concrete sidewalk on D Street from Durwood Way to 10th Street is meandering eight foot walkway with salt finished concrete borders Final cost for the sidewalk improvement was $200,000. Thanks to the staff too from the city that they worked with the developer or they actually the construction crew to give us a great deal on that while they were on site. But as anybody noticed, it's made a huge improvement on Bonita. I know all my three children went through Bonita for many, many years and uh, this is a huge improvement. Thank you guys very much. Slide nine, please. Tobacco grant, the Laverne Police Department re received a two-year grant to provide tobacco education to students and conduct retail tobacco compliance checks. Unfortunately, due to the pandemic presentations, opportunities were limited, but contact was maintained with the schools in the city. Contact was made with all students and their parents who registered for class at Benita High School in the fall. Officers assigned to tobacco education shifts patrol the parks, schools, and shopping centers and make contact and has been set up in front of Stater Brothers to inform parents and students about the use of tobacco and the dangers of vaping. A display of seized items from students is used to educate parents about the new vaping products and how they're dis disguised. Next slide, please. Virtual neighborhood watch meetings. On February 3rd, approximately 50 residents participated in the department's first virtual neighborhood watch meeting via Zoom. Community Services Officer Holly Savage, along with Sergeant Michael Martinez, Corporal Martin Weinrob, and Code Enforcement Officer Jim Crook discuss the importance of the neighborhood watch program, how to create a new watch group, and how to register your group with the police department. Residential and vehicle burglaries, catalytic converter thefts, and the practice of the 9 p.m. routine, which is the photo attached there, was also covered. The police department looks forward to scheduling their next virtual event very soon. To find out about more about the PD's latest programs, Follow us on social media for updates and other important information. We're on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Nextdoor, and Ring at Laverne Police Department. Next slide, please. Business Watch. The Business Watch Crime Prevention Program was reintroduced in September 2020. The program encourages and promotes partnerships between local merchants and the police department. Business Watch program helps business owners and managers to network with other area businesses and create safe and secure environments for their employees and customers while teaching them how to reduce and prevent crime in the business and the property beyond. It's working out very well too. It's a, that's a great program. Thank you, police department. Slide 12, please. Neighborhood watch and sign replacing project. Neighborhood watch sign replacement, uh, the Laverne Rotary Department and the police department recently partnered in an effort to replace neighborhood watch signs throughout the city. If you hadn't noticed, some of them were rusted beyond, you couldn't even read them, but uh, the Rotary, along with donations from Rotary members uh, and a total, uh, we placed a total of 68 signs replaced in early February. They're extremely grateful for the partnership of the Rotary and its members and thank them for helping to keep Laverne community safe and beautiful. Uh, in that photo, we have uh, uh, Chief Paws, we have uh, Captain Colleen Flores, uh, Sam Gonzalez, Lieutenant Sam Gonzalez. We also have the incoming uh, um, incoming Rotary president and also uh, Greg Pilato, uh, Sharon May, incoming uh, Rotary president. Next slide, please. Canine program. This is very exciting for our police department and for the police officers for protection and for our uh, and uh, for our canine program. Over the last year, the Laverne Canine and Police Foundation have raised funds to create and fund a canine program for the Laverne Police Department. In December, Officer Julian was selected as our new handler and Dino was selected, our, which was the new canine. Dino is a male Dutch Shepherd who was born in Europe and hand, hand selected to become a police canine. Officer Julian and Dino just completed a rigorous four-week patrol school along with a two-week article detection school. 
Officer Jillian Dino have been assigned to a patrol shift and are excited to participate in the local community events throughout the year. Special thanks to Linda Logan and the Canine Foundation. Without them, this never would have happened. And uh, thank you to Chief Paws and Conning Flores for your support of this and the officers for supporting this, that we could uh, do this for our community. Slide 14, please. In April, the city implemented the recruiting software NeoGov in order to streamline the job search and application process for interested job seekers. In addition to expediting hiring and providing greater accountability when selecting employees, the number of applicants for open positions has increased significantly. It is not uncommon to have well over 100 applicants for this new resource. Great job, great job, guys. Slide 15, please. General plan, housing element. The city is anticipating the final adoption of its multi-year effort in updating the city's general plan. The guiding document for the next 20 years. A component of the general plan is the update to the housing element, a state mandate update which requires the city to identify sites that can accommodate the needed housing units as allocated by the state. Both of these long range planning documents are scheduled to be before the city council early fall of this year. Next slide, please. Projects to come. Our first inclusion playground at Los Flores Park. The Laverne City Council approved the installation of the inclusion playground equipment at Los Flores Park. Once installed, residents of all abilities and accessibilities will be able to enjoy and play at the new playground. Thanks to the Public Works and also the Public Works Director uh, who just retired, Dan Kesey, for pushing this forward and working with the, uh, the, the manufacturer of the playground equipment. This is fantastic for our community, for all people to enjoy. Uh, Arrow Highway Urban Greening Project. This project will include the revitalization of medians on Arrow Highway from Fulton Road to White Avenue. The pavement rehabilitation projects. Sycamore Drive, Hannibal Street. The project will include the cold milling of existing pavement, the placement of an asphalt rubber aggregate membrane, ARAM, and finish cap with a conventional hot mix asphalt. Fifth, sixth and seventh streets and Peyton Drive pavement rehabilitation projects. Sixth and seventh streets from D Street to C Street will receive a complete removal and replacement of existing pavement, while the remaining locations will receive a cold mill ARAM and finish with an asphalt cap. Downtown Monero Square Stage Project. A new look will be coming to the southeast corner, excuse me, southwest corner of 3rd and D Streets. This project will include the construction of a performance stage and site improvements. It is anticipated that the construction will begin in the fall. Durwood Signal. A new much needed signalized intersection at Durwood Way and White Avenue has come to town. If you guys have seen it, it's almost ready. It's, uh, they're doing the final stuff on it now. The signal will provide controlled and safe movements for vehicles exiting onto Durwood. Cost to install this traffic signal was $336,000. We did receive funding from a highway safety improvement grant in the amount of $275,000. The traffic signal should be fully operational by the end of March, probably more like April. Slide 17, please. Uh, slide, uh, in the coming months, there will be a more uh, visible progress on the extension of the L-Line light rail from Glendora to Pomona and Laverne. Uh, and the buildings that currently occupy the property that were the parking for the Laverne station is to be located at E Street and Arrow Highway are planned to be demolished. The city also continues to plan the for future pedestrian bridge linking the L-Line station to the Fairplex. This project is one of the 13 identified projects in the city's enhanced infrastructure financing district where infrastructure projects are funded specifically from the property tax increment from those properties in the district and where the County of Los Angeles has agreed to partner with the city to help direct these dollars to these improvements in the future. More information can be found on the www.cityoflaverne.org slash EIFD. And I want to thank uh, Supervisor Barger uh, for uh, joining us on that and uh, approving that with the uh, other supervisors. We're one of the first cities to have the EIFD em Enhanced Infrastructure Financing District and uh, we're really pleased for that and uh, we're moving forward with that. Slide 18. Developments to come. The Commons in Amherst is a proposed single family residential development with 42 two-story homes on 5.6 acres of property that is owned by the city at Amherst Street and Williams Avenue. The homes would range between 2,000 and 2,500 square feet in size. It'd be located on private streets with a 14,000 square foot park that would be accessible to the surrounding neighborhood. 
If ultimately approved, it is expected that the homes could be completed this time next year. More, more, more information can be found at www.cityoflaverne.org backslash Amherst. Brandywine Fruit and Walnut. A developer has filed application to deliver two separate properties in Laverne. On Fruit Street south of Lutheran High School, the proposal is for 50 attached townhomes within the Foothill Boulevard specific plan. As part of the requirements for the project, the developer is proposing to build eight single family affordable housing units on city owned property on Walnut and B Streets. This project is expected to be before the Planning Commission and the City Council in the coming months. On First and White, the home and bungalow located at 29, 2109 White Avenue has been relocated. It has moved down the street. I think it's I and F, uh, the, uh, leaving the vacant parcel. MW Investment Group is proposing to develop the site with 18 three story townhomes. Each unit will have a two car garage and share one wall with another unit. 15% of the units are being proposed at affordable levels and the project is consistent with requirements and goals of the Old Town Laverne specific plan. In order to make way for the project, the house that resided on the site was moved. Given the house was not deemed historic, it was, it was approved for demolition. However, thanks in part to the developer and Linda Wilkinson, the house moved down the street and was able to be saved for restoration. I would like to also acknowledge Candace Bocock, Tim Plains and community development and public work teams for their efforts in making this move possible. If anybody's able to see it, I know they push it on Instagram. It was quite, quite amazing. I don't think we've had a house move uh, in the last 30 plus years. So it was pretty fun. It went without a hitch, uh, except for one of the power lines, not power lines, but the telephone lines got stuck, but that was a short little uh, delay, but they're all on our property. If you go on F Street, uh, on uh, F Street and uh, I, check it out. All the properties are on there. They haven't been dropped yet, but they, they're close. Slide 19, please. New businesses. Well, you know, you'd think with COVID that we wouldn't be able to get new businesses. We had some close, but uh, we've had uh, a number of them come up and we've heard great responses. I've had a lot of friends that have been to them and um, the La Creperie French Cafe is slated to open. It's actually open now, which is in the former Sergio's location uh, on Foothill Boulevard and D Street next to the bagelry. Kebab G, new Mediterranean restaurant will be going into the former Lily's Tacos location on Foothill Boulevard and Falcon. Mi Cochina Mexican restaurant is open actually and the former Papa's Artisanal location on D Street, Old Town Laverne. Amazon Fresh, if you've seen next to Kohl's, it's being, uh, they're starting construction, currently under construction at the Kohl's building at Fruit Street and Foothill Boulevard. The building is in the process of being divided so that the new concept of Amazon Fresh grocery store can occupy the Western portion of the building. This new grocery store will be similar in size to other Laverne grocery stores, but will most likely include some new technology such as automatic checkout by your items being scanned when you place them in the cart. It's expected that the new store could be open by the end of summer. Thank you everybody. That concludes my uh, state of the city address. I wanna thank everyone for being here. And uh, you know, uh, as we say, we're moving through the, uh, the orange tier now, hopefully yellow soon and getting our city back open again. And, uh, I also want to thank, I want to also let everybody know that school is in, uh, high school will be in next week. So please everyone be careful. Um, it's, uh, it's going to change the way we do things where we're used to having quiet streets and people walking. Well, it's not going to be that way anymore. There'll be cars and stuff. So please be careful. But, uh, I also want to thank the gold line, uh, L line. And I guess the name's changing again. Yesenia, I want to thank you guys for your communication with our city. When things happen, we are way ahead of the uh, information and our residents, uh, as our discussion before, I've had zero complaints uh, because of the fact that you communicate so well with our city and uh, we're excited to have it come through here. It's gonna really help our city. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. If anybody has any questions uh, for Yosemite and the Yosemite, uh, Yosemite, I'm ready for vacation. <laughs> Yosemite and the Foothill Gold Line or for Mayor Tim Heffern, uh, now is your opportunity to enter them into the chat function. We will just give it a okay.
I should tell you, I have been answering questions on the chat that were directly to me. Oh, okay. Okay. All right, well, if there are no questions, then we will close this meeting. I wanna thank our sponsor once again, Foothill Goldline for their um, support and always keeping us up to date. And thank you, Mayor Hepburn for that enlightening and um, positive presentation about our city. This recording will be made available on the Chamber's website and other resources um, as soon as I can get it downloaded from the cloud. So thank you so much, everybody, for joining. Thank you, Leah. Thank you, Chamber, for all you guys do. And thank you for the businesses that are supporting us as a city and our residents. And residents, shop Laverne. Please shop Laverne. <laughs> Keep your money in Laverne. Gas, groceries, food, wine, adult <laughs> beverage. You got to go, 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 go and purchase. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you, guys. Bye. Thank you. I can hear you breathing. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Leah. Thank you. That was great. Oh, good. Good. Hey, if you can, um, good. I know you recorded it.